keep on leaning. Well, every move I make, I keep on leaning. Well, every move I make, I keep on leaning. Hallelujah, every move I make, I keep on leaning. I keep on leaning. I keep on leaning. verse 
the book of John, the first chapter and the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Revelations, the 22nd chapter, and the 13th verse, and that's Revelation 22 and 13, reads thusly, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And so I want to preach today from the topic, the first and the last word. The first and the last word. Pray with me, if you will, my Father, my God, we ask thy blessings now upon the word that shall be preached, Lord, we ask that thou would move and have thine own way. Prepare the hearts, the minds, the spirit of these thy children to receive thy word, hide me now behind the shadow of the cross that no one would see me but rather Christ within me. And then, Lord, we ask that thou would save somebody's soul, cleanse and make them whole in the name and through the precious blood of Jesus the Christ we do pray. And all of God's people did say, Amen. The word of God for the people of God Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the first and the last word. Have you ever known anyone who felt that they had to have the last word in every discussion? The person who has the last word is generally thought to be an authority on the subject or the dominant personality whose experience or wisdom they feel transcends that of others. There are many who feel like their opinion, they feel like their conclusion, they feel as if their resolution about a problem or an issue or subject matter ought to be considered the last word. Thus their word becomes, they feel, the word for the day. Psychiatrists have discovered that there is an association between what we secretly think and the first words that come to our mind. Thus the word associations have become a meaningful tool in that of psychoanalysis. As doctors ask patients to say the first word that comes to their mind when a randomly selected word is spoken. A youth, a young person that responds jail to the word school, police, home, and future may suggest a lot about what he actually believes about himself, what he actually believes about his future. What is the word that best describes how you feel about your church? I ask you what is the word that, again, best describes how you feel about your church? Well, consider Cassie Bell's answer to that very question. Cassie Bell, a regular churchgoer, believed everything is better if there is a lot less of it. When she drank beer, Cassie Bell wanted a light beer. She bought light potato chips. She used light salad dressing on her salad, so when Cassie Bell started looking for a church home, the word that described which church she would ultimately join would naturally be light, L-I-T-E. She went from church to church, but all of them seemed to be too heavy. 
until Cassie Bell came to the Lighthouse Baptist Church, L-I-T-E. The word light seemed to jump out at her, especially when she had heard the welcome from the pastor, who himself had said, Welcome to the Lighthouse Baptist Church. Had the heaviness of your old-fashioned church got you all weighted down? Try us, said the pastor. We are the new and improved. L-I-T-E, Light Church of the New Millennium. Check us out, and when you do, you'll discover that we have 20% fewer people making commitments, and we have 30% fewer programs. The pastor went on to say uh, to Cassie Bell, if you worship with us, you can get out in half time because we promise you a 35-minute worship service with no song longer than two minutes, no prayer longer than one minute, and no sermon longer than seven minutes, including the hoop. And we believe in light, L-I-T-E. And to show you we believe in light, we are the only church in our community that specializes in rather than the 10% tithe, we, we only ask for the 7.5% tithe. We have the 10-minute Sunday school, and we have doggy bag altar prayers. We have only six commandments, and uh, take your choice. In our New King James Version light edition of the Bible, we will find that we have only Genesis, the 23rd Psalm, three Gospels, the book of Acts and the last two chapters of Revelation. The pastor was really enthusiastic when he looked at uh, Cassie Bell and said, yes, we are the new and improved Lighthouse Baptist Church. We're everything you want in a church and less. Cassie Bell heard that. Cassie Bell became so excited till she waved her hand and said, I want more of that. The preacher said, well, we can't give you more of anything because we believe that he came to give us life and give us life more lightly. Cassie Bell said, well, just save my soul then, brother preacher. And then the preacher said, we can't do that either because that would require your being washed in the blood. And here at the Lighthouse Church, we believe in the quick dip, fast dry, and permanent press. Cassie asked one more question. She said, well, brother pastor, brother preacher, can you then at least get me to heaven? The preacher looked at her and answered, well, there's a heaven regular, and then we've got a heaven light. Heaven regular has streets of gold, pearly gates, fancy mansions, and even eternal life. But heaven light had no streets, heaven light had no gold, heaven light had no mansions, and heaven light had no life at all. Cassie, getting a little bit disturbed, looked at the preacher and said, Well, brother pastor, what do y'all got that can save and is light too? The preacher looked over at Cassie Bell and said, well, that's easy. The word is Jesus, because he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. With that, Cassie Bell said, I'll take two of them. Well, you know, that's a little something that makes us chuckle. But what if you were asked to say the first word that comes to your mind when it comes to God? What would it be? Most would instantly think of security. Some would think of salvation. Others among us heaven, mercy, etc. But my beloved as Christians, we have come to know that God is our everything. Have we not come to know that God is our all in all? He is the first word we think about every morning, and he is the last word we think about before we lay down upon the pallet of our slumber at night. 
He is truly the first. He is truly the last word. And so our text, my beloved, as we look at our exposition, focuses in on John as he shows the word of God is both the source of all beginnings and the only end of salvation. Now, when we consider the word of God, let us think about the Hebrew mindset. Because the Hebrew mindset considered word, W-O-R-D, is both a verbalized utterance, but also it considered word as an event. And so a word was seen as a concentrated, compressed unit of energy. And as the word was spoken, uh, it was felt that this concentrated, compressed unit of energy was released and serves throughout the world, changing, altering, and destroying. Modern thinking is that words affect emotion, but don't alter reality. And in the Hebrew mind, however, the conviction was different. Words change things, especially when it was the word of God. And so the psalmist writes, by the word of God, the heavens were made. God speaks, and after God speaks, galaxies occur. And because words were seen to have power, the Hebrew language only contained about 10,000 words. In comparison to the Greek language, which contained about 200,000 words. And so we'll find that they use words sparingly, carefully, but also thoughtfully. My beloved, let us consider that when John began his gospel with, in the beginning, what the word, he introduced what he knew the Hebrew mind would accept as the power of God. However, when he wrote uh, this gospel, he was living in the city of Ephesus. John was Jewish. His readers, however, were chiefly Gentile. And so in speaking about Jesus Christ, the incarnation of the word of God, John looked for a word which Gentiles would understand. Yet it would be a word to which he could also marry the full force of the Hebrew understanding of the word. And so the word John chose was logos, L-O-G-O-S, logos. And that is the Greek word which has been used uh, for a little over 600 years then, introduced by Heraclitus uh, uh, that refers to the divine plan of things that coordinate a changing universe. And so in essence, the Logos referred to uh, what the secret of how something would work. And thus the two ideas existed, my beloved, the Hebrew idea uh, that saw a word that the power of God ultimately released, while the Greeks uh, saw a word, W-O-R-D, as the secret plan of the divine for the ordering of the universe. What John did then, my beloved, uh, what we uh, come, come to understand, what John did was to bring the Hebrew and the Greek concepts together when he stated that Jesus Christ, that babe born in Bethlehem, is the word of the Logos of God. And so what John was saying very simply was that the power to get things done and, and, and a plan by which it could be done and would be done had all come together in the person of a little baby born in the manger in Bethlehem and the word became flesh and dwelt among men. Verse 14, Jesus, you'll recall, in Revelation 22 underscored the meaning of his incarnation when he notes that not only was he the spoken word of God, but he is also the last word. He is the Alpha, he is the Omega, he is the first and he is the last. And you know Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. And that was good news for Christians. 
but it's also good news for any child of God at any time of the year and we consider the power and plan of God is now available to anyone who will be bold enough to claim both. The full power of our faith is that the power of God had been made available to you, had been made available to me for each and every situation. He is the first and he is the last word. And so the world has, does it not, my beloved, a way of suggesting negative things to us. Our times are becoming so difficult that it is easier to associate negatives rather than positives. Usually what happens uh, is that we'll find this occurrence because the devil has a way of trying to get the first word in the affairs of men. And his first word is usually unsettling, it disturbs, it depresses us. And some of Satan's first words include fear. Some of his first words include the word doubt. Some of his first words include the word sadness. Well, let's look at that word fear as, you know, we've just got through all of last year. And as we begin early in this new year, there are many who have heard the word fear. They're afraid of what the new year will bring. They're afraid of the unknown. They are uncertain of their unknown future. And so the spirit of fear comes from Satan himself. He keeps putting that word into our mind. He keeps infiltrating uh, that word within the parameters in our heads. And this happens each time a believer is faced with a challenge or a sizable task. The spirit of fear has a way of making a creeping entry into every situation. Name the challenge, my beloved, and you'll find the spirit of fear will always appear. But this spirit is not of God. Well, how do you know it, Rev? Because I know God's word. And in God's word, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 said, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When David approached Goliath, he didn't know what to expect. He had never faced a giant such as Goliath of Gath before. But he did not approach him with a spirit of fear, but he approached him with all of the confidence that can only come from God. Years later, David would write in Psalm 27 and 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid so we looked at that word fear let's look at that word doubt d-o-u-b-t name the challenge my beloved and the first word to many is fear's first cousin and that is the word doubt skepticism surrounds every new idea every uncharted course, every circumstance that poses the possibility of failure. Doubt is the first word that the devil will choose to try to put into the head of a believer. Uh, yeah, uh, not only fear, but doubt when they receive an inspiration from God. Had not God inspired some believers to take an unknown direction and and when God does, the first word that the devil will bring to your mind is doubt. Doubt is sometimes aimed at the probability of achieving the result. There are also times when doubt is aimed at the capacity of the believer to achieve themselves. Often, my beloved, the sheer size of the mountain in front of us all us. If we can hear the words of the master addressing this same subject in Matthew 21 and 21, the master says, if you have faith and if you doubt not, you shall not only do 
uh, that which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and thou be cast into the sea, it shall be done. Let's look at the word sadness. My beloved, no matter how joyous the occasion, the devil has a way of bringing up always a spirit of sadness. When we ought to be rejoicing, the devil tries to get in the first word. Sadness has a way of turning what ought to be a joyous occasion into a sad moment. When that happens, the devil had managed to get in the first word. The devil has found that days like Christmas, days like Easter, days like birthday, days like celebrations are the best time to make some people sad. When there had been a death, when there had been a divorce, or another broad change in our family circle, it's easy for the devil to speak the word of sadness. My beloved, we'll find that once he speaks, everything becomes sad. Birthdays become sad. Holidays become sad. All gatherings become sad. And those who do not want to have a sad anything ought to resolve not to allow the devil to bring in his spirit of sadness. Despite a past loss, believers refuse to allow Satan to prevent them from rejoicing in the Lord. Despite the loss of a loved one, believers remember Psalm 35, weeping men dark for a night, but I got joy, and my joy will come in the morning. My beloved, when memories of better times bring briny tears to your eyes, don't let the devil get a foothold. Because God's word also affirms, does it not? We are to count it all joy. And while it is true, my beloved, that the devil often tries to get in the first word to dampen our spirits, to weaken our strength and destroy our resolve, it is also true that the devil does not have ever the last word. Every believer faces life with a full confidence, my beloved, that no matter what troubles approach our lives, the devil does not ever, 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 ever have the last word. Enemies might be digging ditches to try to destroy us, but their ditches and attacks are not the last word. Well, what is the last word, Reverend? Well, Isaiah 54 and 17 said, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. That's God's last word. Temptations and frustrations might try to separate us from God and the love of God, but this world's temptations and frustrations are not the last word. For Romans 8, 37 to 39 said, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's God's last word. Sometimes, my beloved, competitors seem to distance us than to beat us to every opportunity. We always seem to come in second or, or near the very end, and those who come in first don't, don't have the last word. Mark 10, 31 would have us know, but many that are first shall be last, and the last first, that's God's last word. Hezekiah lay down on his bed one night after receiving a word that he had to die. But he turned his face to the wall and he told the Lord in essence, I heard your first word, Lord, but oh Lord, I want your last words to be merciful unto me. God heard his cry and Hezekiah received 15 more years on his life. That was God's last word. One day my Bible would have me know that the king sent out a word that anyone who would pray to his God would be put into a den of lions. But the king's word wasn't the last word because the next day they found Daniel sitting among the lions. That was God's last word. 
The three Hebrew boys received word that their faith would cause them to be thrown in a fiery furnace. A short while later, they emerged from the fire without even the smell of smoke or soot on them. That was God's last word. A little old lady went to court, I'm told, with her grandson one day who had been falsely accused of a crime. And as he was found guilty in every level of the court system, she kept a big smile, I'm told, on her face. When the district court, when the appeals court, when the state supreme court, when the federal appellate court, and even the U.S. Supreme Court turned her down, she still kept that same smile on her face. And her grandson remained in prison. That old lady never ever one time stopped smiling. One day a young man walked into a police station, turned himself in, and he confessed that many years earlier he had committed a crime that resulted in, uh, you know, a young man, this lady's grandson, facing life in prison. And he said he had become a Christian himself and couldn't let another man pay for his crimes. That week the lawyer carried the release decree to the little old lady, but he had to ask her a question. Why is it that you never ever stop smiling? The old lady said, well each time we lost the case, I kept smiling because they didn't have the last word. And on this first day, a long time ago, I got down on my knees on that first day and talked to the man who told me that I am the Alpha. I am the Omega, I'm the beginning and the end. And he told me everything was going to be all right. And I knew he had the last word, that there is no hope. God wants you to know they're not the last word. When teachers say to you there is no help for your child, God wants you to know today they're not the last word. When your situation has been condemned by both friends and family alike, God said they are not the last word. Let me tell you a strange thing, my beloved. He who is the last word is also the first word. Because in the beginning was the word. And over 2,000 years ago, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. They put a cross on his shoulder, but that was not the last word. They hung him high and they stretched him out wide, but that was not the last word. Oh yeah, 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 they nailed his hands and they nailed his feet. They put a crown, a thorn on his head, but that was not the last word. Oh, Lord, he died on that Friday called good, uh, but that was not the last word. He slept on Friday. He slept on Saturday. I'm told that he slept most of the night Saturday night, but that was not the last word uh, because early Sunday morning, my Bible tells me that early, 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 early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave and that was the, the last word because I heard the angels declare, O ye men of Galilee, why, why stand ye now gazing up into the heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall come also in like manner as ye have seen him go up into heaven. O oh, my beloved, it doesn't matter what anyone else in this world says, as long as God is still on the throne, he will always have the last word. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm so glad that one day God had the first word in my life, because one day he said unto me, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. I'm so glad that one day in my life God had the first word. 
because he picked me up and he turned me around and he set my feet on solid ground. I'm so glad that God had the first word uh, because one day he put running in my feet. One day he put clapping in my hand. One day he put joy about the ringing in my soul. God had the first word, but God also had the last word. And in the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and he Lord to the glory of God. Oh, my beloved, you need to know God is good. He's good all the time, and all the time, God is good. And early on in this new year, God is our first word. God is our last word. God is our refuge. God is our strength. God is for us a very present help in the time of our trouble. Has God been there for you? Has God been good to you? Oh, he's been good to you. How do you know it? Because he woke you up this morning. That started you on your way. God's a good God. And God is a way maker, God a burden bearer, God's a heart fixer, God's a mind regulator. God can do anything but fail. I'm not worried about what's going on in our nation. I'm not worried about what's going on in our world because God's got the first word. God got the last word. And Jesus said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Oh, come on, somebody. God said, Justice will run day one, run down like righteousness and flow like a mighty stream. Uh, and God said that nations must lift up the name of Jesus and be one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm not going to worry about our nation. I'm not going to worry about our world, but I'm going to trust in the Lord. Because God is a good God, God is a just God, God is a fair God, God is a holy God, God can do anything but fail. God was in the beginning, God will be in the end, God is the Alpha, God is the Omega. Praise the Lord. Will you trust him today? Has he been God of your life? Has he been with you in a sick room? Has he been with you in a courtroom? Has he ever done anything for you when you were down? Did he pick you back up when you were out? Did he bring you back in? Have you over the years learned that you can walk with him and, and he'll walk with you? Have you learned you can talk with him? He'll talk with you. Have you learned over the years that can't nobody do us like Jesus? Can't nobody do us like the Lord? God is a good guy. He's a way maker. He's a burden bearer. He's a heart fixer and a mind regulator. He's a bridge over our troubled waters. Trust in the Lord. Give it all to God and watch God work. He works in mysterious ways. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He works in mysterious ways and and God says, come unto me and ask anything that you want in my name and it will be given unto you. Guess what? He may not come when you want him, but he will come. And when he does, he's always, you'll find, right on time. God works, my beloved, in a mysterious way. His wonders to perform. But you got to trust him. Because in the beginning was God. And in the end, there's going to be God. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die because my beloved he is the first and he is the last word. May God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. The door of the church is open. Jesus said if today you hear my voice harden not your heart behold I stand at the door and knock if any man will heed my voice Confess his sins. Open up that door. Let me come in. I'll sup with him. 
He can suck with me, Jeremiah, gain strength for his journey. Whoever you are, wherever you are, just as you are, this is a Baptist church. Therefore, you may come candidate for baptism. You may come by letter. You may come through Christian experience. And if you want to know this guy that I'm talking about, call this church. Area code 609-882-4176. Area code 609-882-4176. Area code 609-882-4176. Leave your name, leave your phone number. Myself or one of the deacons will get back to you. We'll pray for you, give you the offer of uh, bring you to the ark of safety. We'll give you, uh, you know, the, the plan of salvation for your life. Because God has a plan for you. And it's only for you. Amen. Your plan is different from my plan. But God's got a plan for each and every one of our lives. God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. Pray for me. And I'll be praying for you. Take the Lord with you early on in this new year. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you beneath his wings of love or by God will take care of you. Don't forget, wear your mask, wash your hands, social distance six feet from one another, and uh, let's keep one another safe. Pray for our nation, pray for our world, pray for our new president and vice president. God bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Amen. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. Economies down. People can't get enough pay. As for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yeah. Folks without homes. And the drug habits, some say, they just can't be. Thuggers and robbers, no place seems to be safe. But you've been my protection every step.
brought me through this. Yes, you did. You brought me through that. Yes, Lord, I'm grateful. Yes, I am to you. Let me say it again. You brought me through this. Uh huh. Thank you, Lord. You brought me through that. Yes, Lord, I'm grateful. Yes, I am to you. Have me sing choir. You brought me. You brought me through this. Yeah, yeah, you brought me through that. You brought me through that. Oh, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful. Yes, I am. To you. Say it again. You brought me. You brought me you brought me, Lord, you brought me, you brought me. Oh, Lord, I'm so grateful. Yes, I am to you. Listen, you made a way. Yes, you did. Thank you, Lord. Out of no way. Yeah, Lord, I'm grateful. Yes, I am. To you, Lord, you open so many doors, oh Lord, that will close in my face. Yeah, Lord, I'm grateful. Yes, I am. To you, crossing, you brought me. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Jesus, you brought me through that. Yes, you did, yes. To you, to you, to you. Come on, soprano, sing for me. Sing. You me Let me hear you, soprano, sing. You me I'm so grateful. Oh, I am grateful. Yes, I am. To you. Altos, let me hear you. you me yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. I'm grateful to you, to you. Come on, tenors, let me hear you sing. Yeah, 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 yes, you did, Lord. Do, 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 yeah. I'm grateful to you. Everybody sing, yeah, you brought me through. Yeah, 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 yes, you did, Lord. You brought me through that. I'm grateful. Stay right there. I'm grateful. I'm grateful, Lord. For right now, I'm grateful for all that you've done, Lord. One more time, say. To you, to you. Come on, everybody, put your hands together. If you're grateful that God has been taking care of you all these years. Quiet, let me hear you say, let me hear you say. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Listen. I'm so grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Grateful for all that you done, Lord. For all that you're doing, Jesus. For all that you're gonna do, Lord. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. 
Lord, I'm grateful. Yes, I am. 